um, basically, to sum that up, with the with the requirements becoming more stringent, candidate prog programs becoming more specialized. Again, we need to take a special approach for hiring a lab director. And um, I want to talk about some best practices and some tips uh, for hiring your perfect lab director. I put up on the slide there a couple of things that you can use as a jumping off point to essentially set your lab director position apart. You want to stand out to attract these high level candidates because going back to the more stringent requirements, the more specialized programs, that essentially equates to a smaller candidate pool that is appropriately qualified and available to work with you in this capacity. So here's a few things that you can do to make your lab director position um, stand out amongst competitors. Compensation is a big one. I counsel a lot of clients on how to appropriately pay their lab director. And this is in terms of a, a full-time lab director typically. Um, but what we're seeing currently in the industry is that a full-time lab director is going to make somewhere between three and four times what a, your medical technologist probably makes. I know that seems like a lot of money. Um, again, small candidate pool it equates to you know them being uh, a higher demand for their services, and there's less supply there with the more specialized training. So you do have to offer a, a competitive package to these level of individuals. The base salary is certainly important, but it's not the only factor. And even if you have a, a salary that is it, it, with an industry standard um, and is competitive, you're going to need to round out your compensation package with other options and other perks, so to speak, to make your position stand out amongst your competitors. Usually we're seeing a lab director offered a bonus structure, which is 10 to 20 percent of their base salary. One thing that I counsel my clients to do is to tie this to their performance. This helps to lessen the impact or risk to the company in terms of its financial uh, offerings for this individual. If you, you're tying a performance to the, the bonus that they are receiving, um, then obviously that can mean that the lab is growing, the lab has more sample volume, whatever the goal is that you've set there. Um, to reflect that, you know, that higher compensation makes sense for your business fiscally also. Lab directors are also uh, used to seeing a 401k or a retirement plan offered and full benefits, of course, to this level of individual. Relocation is something that uh, I, I encourage my clients to offer for a full-time lab director. This shows upfront investment in the candidate but it's without a huge cost to the company. Usually a relocation package uh, for a lab director is gonna be less than $10,000. And that's a one-time essentially bonus um, that you can offer the, the lab director to show that you understand that moving, relocating for this position is not easy and helps out, out with that cost as well as you know, kind of welcomes them to your team um, and it's, it's, that cost is usually less than 5% of their salary. And again, it's just that one time. Another thing to uh, set your position apart and to hire someone that will meet your needs is to be as flexible as possible. Um, in terms of both the credentials that you're requiring and the location of where the services are rendered. Let's start out with the credentials. So we talked about what CLIA requires uh, for high complexity lab directors uh, versus moderate complexity. And I'm talking here in terms of a high complexity full-time lab director, but define what you absolutely need and what is a preference. In my intake calls with clients, a lot of times they will tell me, well, I would really prefer to work with a pathologist. And I dive into that with them. You know, why is it that that's your preference? Because if you consider a board certified PhD, for example, that opens up the candidate pool. Because like I mentioned, the candidate pool is small, not a lot of people to choose from. So we wanna make that uh, candidate pool of the people that they're considering for this position as, as large as possible so that they make the right hire. Um, and I would also encourage all of, my, all of my clients to talk to or interview candidates who meet their required profile once you've dug down into that. What are the absolute requirements you have to have for your state, your accrediting body, and your testing. 
interview the people that meet that required profile, even if they don't fit all of the preferences that you would ideally love to have in a, in a hire. A good recruiter will point out the ways that the candidates do and don't meet your particular preferences when they are submitting that person for your review. So having a conversation with your recruiter about uh, what requirements are met, what preferences are met and not met, and the pros and cons of that will help you make a successful hire as well. And then location is a big one. We're seeing a lot of people working from home now, and that extends to lab directors. Uh, we heard Dr. Sharp talk about how she completes most of her duties as a part-time lab director for her four labs remotely. Um, we're seeing a lot of remote work now, and even folks who are interested in a full-time lab director position are, are asking for a lot of their work to be done remotely, um, even when they already live in the area where the lab is located. So we're seeing a big shift to the work from home, even in these higher level lab positions where that is, is an option. Um, a lot of states have a certain on-site visit requirement, or there are a few states anyway that have that on-site visit requirement. And of course, the lab director needs to be visiting frequently enough to ensure the compliance and to have the uh, interaction with the staff and the communication there and to address any issues. But if there's a way that you can create this position that has a day or two on-site a week, or regular visits if the person is not uh, actually located in the area, we're seeing a lot more success in terms of hiring a high level person for this type of role now, if that flexibility is offered. Uh, we recently had a client that actually hired somebody completely remotely and uh, that person, this lab is not in a state that has a specific on-site visit requirement, but they want their lab director to visit every month. And so we helped them with an arrangement that their uh, hired full-time lab director works basically remotely, um, is very available to them and their staff, but comes on site every single month to meet those needs that they have. 